Hey there, Liam. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Uh, your mom sent over a video with you going over your rocket material. So this is my response back to uh, what you sent over to me. Uh, three things I want to talk to you about today. Um, uh, a minor pentatonic, um, a technical and musical element to, uh, to work on the tune. Uh, number two, your note reading. And then number three, the song that you're working on that I'm not going to try to pronounce. So I'll, let, I'll leave that up to the experts. Um, so cool. I'll just go down the list and uh, let me know if you have any questions about any of this. So first off is A minor pentatonic. Sounding good. First thing, make sure your guitar is in tune. Uh, when your strings was off a little bit, um, not awful, but just make sure every time you pick up your guitar, you tune it. Um, it's important because you're only going to sound as good as you're tuning. Um, with the three note sequence, um, there's one thing I want you to work on is technical. So when you're practicing this, get your A minor pentatonic. Your sequences look great. They're coming along nicely. But what I notice when you're playing is that you are using all down picks with the with this with the um, uh, with the sequences, and you're you're not going to get as fast as you as you can be is if you use an alternate picking, which means you're picking up and down. So to demonstrate, I'm just going to take one note at a time: down, up, 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 moving through the scale like that. Um, uh, what you, I recommend doing first is maybe picking one note and just practice, or you know, one note at a time of the scale, hitting it four times, down, up, 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 and then taking maybe two at a time, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, and then moving into one, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. The first time you kind of do that, don't, it's not a race. Don't feel like you have to fly through the thing. What you want to be is really accurate with your down, up picks. Um, if you try to fly through it, you might do a couple downs in a row, then an up. Uh, I would recommend just going really nice and easy, a uh, gentle person pace, uh, making sure to do down, up picks. Second is musical that I want you to do with it. Um, your sequences are nice. I want you to put a gap in between each sequence or a rest in between each sequence. That way it starts becoming more like a musical idea rather than some sort of technical exercise. Obviously we want to practice technique and make sure we can do it consistently. Right? We want to be able to do that. But you know, for phrasing purposes, um, what we're ultimately after, you want it to have a musical quality, not just um, you know, how fast can I play sequences. Right? So put a gap in between each one. Hey, there are vibrato. You can vibrato these notes. Vibrato. And now it's gone from a technical. Up. There might be times you might want to do that, but. It sounds more musical to my ear. Um, just a little space in there will go a long ways. You need the space. The space doesn't matter. You can do. Right? You can draw that out pretty long. Um, so work on that. And then have rhythmic variations. Very in the, in the same vein that we did with, uh, with our twinkle, uh, twinkle variations. Um, so what you can do is you can take a, a plain sequence like this. See, I did the rhythm. It was all even the entire way. Why don't you if we did something like... See, I changed up the rhythm a little bit. So there, I just took like a little rhythmic idea. So I can go. So I've gone from playing just a straight rhythm. Add the space in between. And then taking the rhythm of the sequence I played in, bah, 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 change it up, bah, bah, bah. right? You could do it that way. That way you start making musical phrases rather than um, how fast can I play through a sequence, which the only people who are interested in that are good other guitar players. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, that's what I want to do for sequences. Number two, I want you to go through Howbook 31. 
we'll talk about pickup notes next time uh, we're, we're chatting live uh, because I want to make sure I explain it correctly to you um, because I'm kind of confusing to some people. But here's what I want you to do is I want you to mark out the musical phrases. Um, and so what that means is um, for this one, you have like longer notes than others. So you'll mark have like a line where you have like the long held out notes. So you have like a set of notes and then you have like one that's longer. In our case, it'd be a dotted, uh, dotted half note. You would draw a line in, in over top of that and practice just that much by itself. So don't try to play through the whole exercise because that thing is I think like four or five lines long. Don't start at the top, work your way down to the end of the end of the song, come back up again, work your way to the end of the song, come back up, work your way. Because you're, what's gonna happen is this, you're gonna practice the first part of the song really well and then you might not get to the, the, the last part of the song hardly at all and but I'll know I'll know that happened because you'll start off really strong and as you play through the piece it'll slowly fall apart um so what I would be a better solution to that would be to maybe mark out the first phrase um of uh worry man blues practice the first little bit it's just by itself right I think it's like two measures long and then go on to the next two measures practice that then try to string them together. And then when you come back for your next day's practice, go to the very end of the song and practice that phrase. And then practice the second to the last phrase and see these pieces together. So you're not always practicing the beginning of the song all the time. Um, I was guilty of this. I'm still maybe guilty of it sometimes where I practice the first part of the tune, get that really smooth, and I hardly ever get to the end of the song. And I hear it all the time because someone will be playing for me and they'll start off really strong with their notes and then all of a sudden, it just, as they go along, it just starts slowly not being as clean as they would like it to be. So that's how I want you to practice Hal Book 31 for next time. And then lastly uh, is the song, which I say that I'll leave that up to the experts to pronounce the name of the song, um, is uh, bar chords. Um, the other chords, the, the open chords are sounding clean. The bar chords, let's work on those some more. We'll make that our, our project for the next uh, foreseeable lessons. Um, so basically, um, bar chord practice, go to the fifth fret, straighten your first finger right thumb is key to this if your thumb's too high you can't get that first finger straight put your first finger straight lay it on the strings but don't push down all right take your first finger and kind of rock it forward so your elbow is going like back towards the back wall back here so back and that way i'm only fretting one string right now the first string and then i roll i'm like slowly doing an uppercut so here uh, it's actually gonna be in the frame and I'm gonna slowly do an uppercut and then roll back so it's this motion right here is, is what, we're, what we're after down roll back up down roll back up first string roll try to fret the second string as you roll you try to flatten out roll that get that third string that's the hardest one it's like you know it's weird it's kind of like most people listen to that crease of the of the of the of the last knuckle joint right here, or the second knuckle joint right here. So you hit, roll, flatten out, flatten out. Now are you gonna play like this in real life? No, but what we're trying to do is trying to get your finger used to pressing across all six strings. So you hear, you rock, 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 rock. And as you see, I'm doing that, as I'm doing that, I'm kind of doing this uppercut motion, like this right here. It's not, it's not a big uppercut. It's just, that's kind of like the, the direction that we're moving in. So it's really small. And then back down. And if I go back down, I do the opposite of uppercut. I'm actually moving back towards the back wall. So I go this way for the uppercut and back down this way. This will be important later on, further, way further down the road when we start doing like uh, sweep arpeggios um, where you have to uh, fret um, um, on the same fret on adjacent strings, on the same str on the strings that are next to each other. Um, so this is going to be an important technique that will kind of be with us for a long time, being able to kind of rock the first finger this way, or uh, the other fingers for that matter. Um, and then we'll talk more about the strum pattern uh, uh, when I see you um, next week. So uh, that's what I want to talk about for today. Uh, if you have any questions about this, have your mom shoot me over a message. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, and then make sure to send me a video before Monday. That way I can have respond back to you in a timely fashion. Um, if, like, and, uh, like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. And I will see you next time. Bye.